Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It is Wednesday, and in the studio with me tonight, Alan Ruff and Tam McManus back with us after uh, all those holidays that he's had during the season, which is not really all that good. Only Ruffy and Tam, ex hibbies decide to take holidays during the season. Anyway, they're back to work, and here's what we're going to talk about. We've got the quarterfinals of the Betfred League <coughs> Cup to discuss. We'll get the predictions from the lads as well. But we start with an emotional day around Ibrox because every Rangers fan and many football supporters were dreading this day, which was, of course, uh, the sad passing of Fernando Rickson and the funeral to follow. And uh, when the hearse was passing by Ibrox, it was indeed uh, a poignant time for so many fans to shed a tear and remember the great days uh, that they watched Fernando playing for Rangers in the blue around Ibrox. Our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi followed the cortege. An icon of Ibrox. Today, former Rangers captain Fernando Rickson passed the place he used to call home one last time. Flowers, flags and scarves showered the cortege as it stood by the main entrance with thousands of fans, former players and the current squad all paying their respects before his funeral took place at Wellington Church in the West End of Glasgow. Since his passing a week ago, thousands of tributes have been left around the stadium gates with all corners of Scottish football uniting in paying their respects to the former Netherlands international. Outside Ibrox here today, you could really gauge exactly what Fernando Rickson meant to people and how truly popular he was. Now, people loved him for not only what he did on the field as a leader for Rangers, but also for what he did off the field as well. Oh, um, I've come to pay my respects to Fernando, who was a good ambassador for Rangers. Just sad watching it. You know, he's got a good turnout. Yeah. And we'll win, we'll win an egg for him. It was very sad to see him in that state, but he's, a, he's been a warrior and an ambassador for Rangers Football Club. Fernando Rickson will clearly always be in the hearts of people here as his heroic and brave approach to life, both on the pitch as well as away from it, will never ever be forgotten. I think it was heartening, Ruffy, <coughs> to see so many people uh, from right across the football community all coming together, fans, managers, players, uh, just paying tribute to Fernando Rickson because of the battle as well off the field with uh, motor neurone disease. And I think, you know, if there's, if there's any lesson to be learned from it is football's just a game. There's nothing more important than life. You no, know, football fans are great at these times of need uh, for families. Uh, they get right behind uh, the club and the player. It was reminiscence of the, the Davy Cooper funeral. I uh, was at that and the fans were there and their numbers as well. You know, it, it just goes to show you there is a human link here. You know, they, they idolise these players from afar, but uh, when anything like this happens, they get right behind them. Yeah, and maybe, uh, you know, Celtic boss Neil Lennon uh, attended uh, the Rickson funeral and, of course, paid a, a really nice tribute to him over the last 24 hours as well, Tam. It's at times like these you just wish people the penny would drop and and that, you know, yes, by all means have rivalry, but the abuse, surely people would start to see the penny would drop that, you know, it's just a game of football. Yeah, it is. It's sad that it takes tragedies on both sides for the teams to come together and, and show a bit of common sense and a bit of human decency. You know, the same with Billy McNeil when he passed away, Sandy Jardin, guys like that, you know, real proper legends at Celtic and Rangers. You know, and, and they'll all come together and they pay tribute. Uh, because, as you said, it's, it's only a game of football. You know, and people need to realise that, that these people have got lives outside football, families. <coughs> and uh, for, for Fernando's family, you know, it, it's devastating. You know, over the last five or six years, he's, he's fought like a lion. You know, he, he, try and, he try and find a cure, he try and get better. But it was, it was, it was a, a battle, unfortunately, he could never win. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just really, really sorry for his family, his wife, his kid, that, that, uh, that he's died at such a young age. It's a tragedy. I played against Fernando many times when I was at Hibs. 
Uh, and I shared a couple of nights out with him when I was in Glasgow. Real great character, yeah. you know, and very good football player. And that he'd, he'd, you know, he'd big balls as well. You know, you look <coughs> at, you know, his, his debut I think for Rangers in the old firm game, Bobby Petter. You know, tore him apart and he get, he get hooked. And you can just imagine now the social media days, the the, the, the outpouring. Of, you know, he, get him, he's not good enough for Rangers. Yeah. And a lot of people were questioning him. And uh, you know what? He fought back. He ended up captain in the club. You know, winning player of the year along with John Hartson and getting in the Holland international squad. So he showed that he had a big heart as a player as well, as a, as a person. Yeah, absolutely well said, Tam. Um, and of course, uh, Fernando <coughs> loved his football. We love our football on this programme. And he is what we're going to be talking about as far as the League Cup's concerned because the match is not too far away from kicking off. Here's what we've got to look forward to. Livingston against Rangers, Hearts against Aberdeen, Kilmarnock against Hibernian and Celtic against Partick Thistle. Um, you know, a lot's been made of <coughs> this could be a, a troublesome night for Rangers because of that surface but Gary McAllister's having none of it That's why we've got to be on our toes it's a difficult opponent you know we've only played them recently you know they're organised they're competitive they'll be physical you know and they get results you know so we've got to be on our toes I don't want to be going on about the, the, the surface you know it's, it's the same for everybody um, but they're obviously you know they, they're used to it and they have got some good results at home the wee bit unlucky at the weekend you know watching watching the highlights of that game so it's, it's going to be a tough game. Is this one of their best avenues for success this season, Tam? Yeah, I think this is their best. Obviously, I think the two cups are their best opportunity. I think Celtic will be too strong for them over a, a league campaign. You know, their squad's a, a lot stronger than Rangers. Uh, if Rangers can stay clear injury, yes, they can maybe get back in the title race. But I think League Cup, Scottish Cup, you know, one-off game. They're capable of beating Celtic. They showed it last season in a one-off game. Uh, I think tough game for them tonight, Livingston away. <coughs> Surface, as we've all spoke about it, an absolute nightmare for any player. Uh, and they'll just want to go there. It'll be a battle. You know, they've got to match uh, Livingston physically. And if they can do that, they've got better players and they're going to win the game. But tough, tough tie for them. Yeah, and I read the headline with great interest this morning. Jurgen Klopp thinks that Steven Gerrard is the natural successor to him at Liverpool. I think you'd have to win the league with Rangers for him to make that jump in the next two or three years. Yeah, well, if that's the case, then you might have to wait a while, according to Celtic, because they've talked about winning 10 and 11 in a row. So it used to be a tradition at Liverpool where, you know, the, the past players stepped up, uh, you know, through the into the managerial job. You know, I think it's changed a wee bit now. I think there's an, an awful lot of big foreign managers out there who have won, like, Champions League and, and Europa Cups, and, and they're the kind of managers that clubs... Tenny Gofer, he's, he's a legend of the club, you know, that I don't think it would be a gamble. I think he's learned enough at, at Rangers. So it'd be an interesting one. But if, if Klopp's saying and recommending him to the, the powers that be, then you never know. Yeah, uh, just with regards to Livingston, Ruffy, Gary Holt has <coughs> said that he's he wants his players to show their ugly side tonight to try and beat Rangers. I don't think he needs to say that to him. They've been showing their ugly side all season. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're, they're, you know you, you know what you're getting with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the way they play, you know, and particularly against the likes of Rangers and Celtic. You just have to get in their faces. You just have to get into the players' faces and just make sure the good players don't have time in the ball. You, you, you really try and pinpoint the guys who are going to hurt you and you make sure that they're, they're off their game or they don't like the surface or you make sure they don't like the surface and then you take it from there. But like Tam, I, I just think Rangers are too strong at this moment in time for the other teams in the league. No slip-ups tonight? Not for me, no. No, I think Rangers are one. OK, um, Celtic against Partick Thistle. Uh, Neil Lennon obviously <laughs> questions asked of whether the pressure is mounting because uh, Celtic fans are wondering if there's a quadruple treble on the horizon. Uh, they'll need to try and win the League Cup before the year's out. Partick Thistle stand in their way. Uh, but the Celtic manager, Neil Lennon, is not feeling any added pressure. I don't think there's any pressure on the players now. Um, in terms of you know this competition anyway, they've won it three years in a row. So uh, there's I, I don't know if there's a huge expectation level on them to, to win it again. If if that is the case, then they're, they're well used to it. But um, you know no one's feeling any pressure going into tomorrow. Well, the strange thing about it, you know, the way the 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 country works, you know, as soon as they slip up and won, people will be battering them mm. over the head with it as a failure. I don't think he's got any room for uh, manoeuvre. Uh, Neil Lennon this season, I think, uh, as you said, he needs to keep winning. You know, I think that they're only one or two defeats away from the fans kind of turning on him again. You know, obviously, he bought himself 
you know, a fair bit of favour when he won the old firm game, you know, beat Rangers comfortably. They go out to Partick Thistle tonight, you know, straight away he's under he's under pressure again. I think that's just the life mm. uh, of a Celtic Rangers manager. But I don't expect Celtic tonight to have any slip ups. I think Thistle will get a lift from the prodigal son, Ian McCall coming back and Alan Archibald. I think the fans will get I think they'll get behind the team again, but uh, Celtic will be far too strong for, for Thistle. Yeah, that's Tam's way of saying, uh, <clears> you know, it's Celtic and Rangers, Ruffy, you're one game away from a crisis. Mm -hmm. I don't think a crisis will happen tonight. Uh, I, I think Thistle will be better organised. Uh, defensively, they'll have to be better than what they have. I think deep down, Neil wants his treble. You know, I think, uh, I know he's saying it's not a big deal, but I think deep down, he, he want to be remembered for a manager that got his own treble uh, and, and I think that will be the drive for him to prove to a lot of supporters who did doubt him earlier on that he is the man in the job so I, I think there will be a will for him to win these games. Yeah, um, obviously the, the big story around Partick Thistle, Ruffy, as well as the new <coughs> manager going in, he'll obviously try and get them organised tonight until he gets his feet right under the table but I wonder uh, when he walks along the corridor who will be sitting in the uh, chairman's chair or the owner's chair at Partick Thistle because Colin Weir has suddenly come back in and he wants to make sure that he has the control that can then pass on to uh, the Partick Thistle fans in the future. Obviously, you've got David Beattie in there with his <coughs> own consortium. Where should they go? Me personally, you know, you, you've got if somebody Partick Thistle at heart, you know, running the club. David Beattie will say that the people who are there have that in mind. I, I don't doubt that for a minute. But if they're going to sell to a consortium who have not got Partick Thistle, at heart, I don't think it's the right move. You know, Colin Weir has already proved that he's prepared to put lots of money into the club, training ground, academy, the women's football, everything. So if you're a supporter, I think he would be the guy you would want to back in this one long term. These consortiums tend to come in and hang about for two or three years and then if they get fed up, they move on and then you don't know who you're going to get moved on to. So I think the majority of supporters will hope that there's a plan there that they, they can buy into. Uh, you can only look at the evidence, uh, Tom, and quite simply, <coughs> Colin Weir has continually put his money where his mouth is as far as Partick Thistle are concerned. They will be the only club that I know in the history who turned down a man who's not only put money in, had an academy in place for them, but they've turned down someone who has, <laughs> you know, the interest of £161 million pounds in a lottery win. Yeah, I think it was a dream come true for Partick Thistle when he won the lottery, to be honest with you. He's a, he's a Thistle supporter. And as Ruffy's saying, he's, he's ploughed in a lot of money. You know, they've got a great youth set up uh, at Partick Thistle. You know, and he's been a big factor in that. And uh, I agree with Ruffy. I think you should go with the fans. You know, you get that kind of backing with Colin Weir. You know, the money behind them. You know, that, that security. You know, you might have a consortium coming in for two or three years, maybe make a few quid and then sell it on again. And who, as Ruffy was saying, who they sell it on to. So I would agree. I would go with Colin Weir and I'd go with supporters. Because they, after all, they've got the club at heart. They, they you know, they've, they care about the club. You know, they care how, how well they do. They're not just in it to make money. And uh, so I think they should go. With, I don't think they should turn down uh, Colin Weir. Yeah, OK. Um, not too many people in this studio <coughs> disagreeing with you on that, Tam. Uh, of course, coming up, we'll look at the other two quarterfinal ties as well and discuss other managers under pressure. It seems to be the sacking season or certainly calling for the sack of so many uh, in sports. We will talk about Tam's new hairstyle, but probably give him more pelters for suggesting there was going to be 41 goals scored last weekend in the Premiership. It didn't quite materialise. Here's a look at the quiz. Yes, that Dutch player might give it away for you. It's an easy competition this week. You can win yourself uh, a T-shirt, a PLZ team T-shirt in your favourite team's colours. Mm. Uh, of course, that Dutch player scoring a wonder goal. Nothing like Tam's wonder goal for Hibs against Rangers at Ibrox, which was an absolute peach of a volley as well. Um, OK, uh, I was Saturday just waiting for the goals to fly in, Tam. Uh, they didn't fly in, so where are they going to fly in tonight at Tynecastle? <laughs> Suddenly, Craig Levine says... Let's
listen, I didn't want to over-celebrate the Derby win because, you know, he knows that, again, he's one game away from people calling for his head, but he's got Aberdeen tonight. I'll tell you, if they could defeat Aberdeen at Tynecastle tonight, suddenly the whole thing flips on its head. He's in a semi-finals. Suddenly my Levino last old Christmas prediction is uh, <laughs> looking good. Yeah. Uh, if Remember went... your Levino last old Christmas was based on the fact if he lost at the weekend, I said he wouldn't <laughs> last old Christmas, but uh, it's a brilliant way you're twisting it to make it as if you're <laughs> some kind of prophet. But what about tonight? And do you think just on that point, you were obviously watching the derby, I thought they were the better side. I thought he, he deserved his moment in the sun. <clears throat> he did. I, you know, I think Hart's probably over a piece, uh, just about edged it. Uh, obviously, the goal they get is a little bit fortunate for, for their point of view and un unlucky for Hibs, but I just thought Hibs wasn't, were, were poor on the day. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think you should play the boy Doige. I think you should play two up front. You know, tactically, you know, I thought Hart's, you know, I thought he, he outcoached him. I think Levine outcoached him. He made this, uh, good, good substitutions. And uh, they deserved the win, but uh, big big game tonight. You know they beat Aberdeen tonight. All all of a sudden, the, the garden's pretty rosy in Tynecastle again. They're at Hamden, <clears> you know, and, the, and they've just beat their biggest rivals. So Craig's under no illusions. He knows he has to keep winning games because uh, you know they're just about you know one game away, two games away for turning on them again. But you know, hopefully that may start for for Hearts to go and and, and kick on at the table. Isn't it amazing, Ruffy? But nobody's really talking about Aberdeen now. Derek McInnes <clears> has got what I think is an incredible amount of pressure because the Dons fans think they should be in finals. They think they should be battering it out for second place in the league. That's an expectation level up there. It's incredible. Yeah, in particular the start, obviously, in the league. You know, they're, they're not really pressing Rangers and Celtic just now. They're not threatening to take a second place. So the onus then goes on to the Cups. And rightly, as you said there, they expect to get to finals. And uh, if he wasn't to get this one tonight, I'm not talking about sacking or anything like that, but there'll be a lot of displeasure in Aberdeen, obviously, with everything that's going on up there. They're, they'll be really disappointed. Derek just took the win at the weekend and got out of there. You know, there's no way did they deserve to get anything out of that game, but they got it. Uh, they're not playing well. I don't think they're going to turn it ice in good form, but for me, that's a toss of the coin, that game. Uh, I think it's an on-the-night game and what players have got you know, the bottle to stand up and be counted. Yeah. Don't forget, um, if any Aberdeen players are on the bus now, make sure the driver doesn't take you to Tanadice or it could be a heavy defeat <laughs> at Tyne Castle for you this evening. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> there's one of, honestly, Tom. It's a bad day. <laughs> it's a bad day for it's, Tom. It's a, it's there's a one, there's a one every day. <laughs> a I'm worried about is, There's uh, one every day. That's what happens when you get near 70. You just start going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going I'm definitely going for a Hearts win. Yeah, are you? It wasn't as bad as the Lam Lambert effect uh, yeah, for Lam Chelsea. Yeah, absolutely. Earlier yeah. on. <laughs> so, um, nevertheless, he's going for the Jambos. Are you? No, I think Aberdeen will win. I fancy yeah. Aberdeen. I think they'll go down there. Big support travel down there. And uh, I think they'll. I think Aberdeen will, will get the victory. Yeah, what about your old side, Tibbs, at Kilmarnock? Now, suddenly, it was one of those crazy moments. He loses a derby. People start thinking... Let's look towards him. We called it last week the El Sakiko derby and suddenly Paul Heckingbottom is under pressure. He's had the vote of confidence as well. The dreaded vote of confidence. I think, Paul, I think you need to win tonight. I think with Celtic on the horizon at the weekend, I think if they don't go down to Rugby Park tonight and get through, I think I think he'll, I think about a job, to be honest with you. I think he'll go. Uh, before I think, Celtic? I think he'll go before Celtic. I think he's got to win that game tonight. <clears throat> Me personally. You know, I'd probably give them that Celtic and Aberdeen, but I think the, the Hibs supporters now are just, you know, they want him out, you know, and to a man, you know, it's not just a, a small percentage, it's, I'd say, 90, 95% supporters had enough of him, want him out the door, want somebody else in. I think just getting to Hamden would take a little bit of pressure off, off him. I think the season is, you know, if they get beat tonight, it's, you know, the Scottish Cup obviously to come, but out the League Cup as well, nah, I think he'll, I think he'll have to go. Yeah. Do you see them winning? Bizarrely, I do. Yeah. I think I think he'll go three at the back tonight. I think they'll go two up front. I think Dodge has got to play. I think that's been a noose round his neck. You know, he's, he's signed seven or eight boys and he's got them all on the bench. <clears throat> you know, if you're a manager and you're bringing new players in, you're playing them. You know, you brought them in. They've got a loyalty to you as well. Yeah. You know, you you, you play them, and for him to not to play them, you know, is a is a bit damning on the on the recruitment policy at, at Hibs. You know, him bringing players in. So I think he'll he'll play his, the guys he signed. He'll bring them in tonight in a big game. And then hopefully they can do the business for them, and I think Hibs might win it. Ruffy? 
I'm not as confident as that. You know, they'd have to be a, a really good team talk in that dressing room to let these Hibs players know exactly what the demands are when you pull on that jersey. Uh, they'd have to be a vast improvement for the weekend. I think, again, this is a toss-up of the coin. Uh, but I'm like Tam. Uh, I'm going to go towards Hibs uh, to get this. OK, I'm going Celtic, Rangers, Kilmarnock and Hearts. Tam, give us your four. Aberdeen, Hibs, Rangers, Celtic. I'm going to go Celtic, Rangers, Hearts and Hibs. OK, there you have it. To Glasgow, to Edinburgh. So Ruffy can still travel safely to the east and the west. <laughs> it's all there for him. That's the way he looks at life. <laughs> anyway, on that note, <laughs> thank you very much to Tom McMahon. It's good to have him back with us. And Alan Ruff, don't forget you can follow us across all the social media, uh, the ever-growing football family. Thank you to so many of you spreading the word, <coughs> liking, sharing and following us uh, and subscribing to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, from Ruffy, Tam and from myself, Peter Martin, thank you very much for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.